I'm Renee Barrio, Head of Curatorial Affairs here at the McNay Art Museum, and welcome to our exhibition, Pop America, 1965 to 1975. The exhibition really broadens the way that we think of America, and the accent is very purposeful in the title. Pronouncing Pop America, America encompasses not just artists from the United States, and you'll find Robert Indiana and Andy Warhol, and you'll even find Roy Lichtenstein, Klaus Oldenburg, but we're gonna head south of the border together in this experience. Front and center in the show is Mexico. We'll also go into the Caribbean with Puerto Rico and Cuba. We'll venture further south into Argentina, as well as Chile. It's often very graphic, very colorful, often uses the vocabulary of the everyday. So for example, sometimes artists will draw on commercial logos or advertising imagery. They'll draw on fashion imagery. So it's things that people are familiar with. So often there's that initial hook, right? It, it pulls you in because you, you, you know what the imagery is and then it slowly reveals its content to you. From works on paper, to painting, to sculpture, to even performance pieces that are recorded on video in this inaugural exhibition. It's gonna be a national tour, and we really wanted the kickoff of this national tour to be in San Antonio, just two hours from the border with Mexico. But when you think of pop, at least in the US, you often don't go political. And this exhibition really expands the way viewers interpret pop beyond the things that define the movement. And when I talk about things and I talk about pop art, it's American things, American consumer goods that we often associate with Andy Warhol and his representations of Coke bottles or soup cans or even dollar bills. And in this show, we notice that artists south of the border are equally invested in the things that defined American consumer culture. But what happens when you go south of the border, and even within our own borders, is that pop artists use those things as points of entry into a larger conversation. A conversation that involves economy, it involves politics, it involves social change. Yes, the U.S. is equally political with its pop art, and we have Andy Warhol in the exhibition from 1964 referencing the recent Birmingham race riots in one of the screen prints in the show. People thought Warhol was maybe frivolous and, and, and really not very deep. He was very, very subversively making these strong political statements with the work. He was really you know, kind of masterminding our response to some heavy political subjects. What's interesting about the, the works, the actual works in the checklist for Pop America, is that they really straddle both high and low arts in the sense of what's accessible and who were the original consumers. We have very expensive paintings, unique works of art that were created often for private consumption and seen only behind closed doors. But equally on the checklist, you find posters and prints that were expressly designed to be publicly disseminated and be used for activation. Some of the largest works in Pop America were actually the vision of women artists from Venezuela as well as Colombia. And I'm speaking in particular about Marisol, Marisol Escobar, who shuttled in between her native Caracas and Paris, but spent most of her adult career in New York City. And the show really opens with a woman artist kind of setting the stage for what it means to be Pan-American with Marisol's self-portrait standing alongside her mother from 1968. It's a beautiful mother and child wearing pink and they're under a yellow umbrella and it really sets the tone for what you're going to see in the rest of the show. In the second gallery, the centerpiece, there are four dresses that explore how pop art was also pop fashion and how pop art translates into popular culture. And it really kind of brings together fashion and advertising and other things that are not, maybe not considered fine art. In the last gallery, we have a very large scale sculpture. It's four letters that spell, that's L-U-T-E. It translates at fight. So we're getting into a little more political conceptual work as you move through the show. One of the other directions that the McNay is moving in in terms of our exhibition presentations is to incorporate activity areas, especially educational activity areas within the exhibition itself. So in Papa Medica, there are activities that 
families can do together, or adults can do, or children can do, including voting for works of art that have strong messages. There are activities where you can make drawing and actually make art sitting in the galleries. So it's really become sort of part of each of our presentations. There's always that element of really engaging the public with the art and also making everyone an artist in a sense. One of the main reasons we were excited to partner with the Nasher on this exhibition is that we immediately saw it as a source of pride with our Hispanic community right here in San Antonio. There's only one Texan in the show and that's Mel Casas and he happens to be from San Antonio and we gave him the perfect stage to express his idiom in the late 60s and early 70s because San Antonio with the hemisphere and with artists like Mel Casas was a very important part of this larger Pan-American conversation of pop. The painting in Pop America has an image of Frito Bandito, which you might recall from Frito-Lay. So it was an advertising logo, which was stereotyping Mexicans. So he was, he was commenting all these things, and so ripping things right out of everyday life, collaging them all together, and then making paintings from those. And one of the important aspects of sort of pop art is the way that it has universal appeal, in that it's often very graphic, it uh, draws on popular culture. It uses a lot of vernacular and colorful imagery. So people are seduced by the, the popness of it, and then they really get the deeper content. Mm -hmm.